Because it's not so much that I'm a great real estate agent as it is the rest of you all just suck. Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. I'm glad you're here. We have a super special guest speaker today. I don't know if any of you, uh, if you know who Alex Mayer is, you know how awesome this is going to be. Just a quick intro and highlight to Alex. He has been licensed since 2018. He serves two markets, actually. He's in Minnesota and Eugene, Oregon. So it's kind of cool to watch him like, you know, have it's such a such a strong presence in his uh, community that he's been in for so long and then be able to rebuild in a brand new community. So I think we're actually going to start seeing, seeing some great things coming from him. And if you follow him, you know that he posts way more about his dogs than he does about anything else. I don't know if anyone gives their dogs as great of a life as he does with his dogs. I'm kidding. I do too, but uh, it's really cool. He he loves his dogs. They're on his signs and everything. So anyway, he's going to talk to you today about um, creating a better customer experience through committing to your core values, something I'm truly, truly passionate about. So I'm really excited to kind of hear Alex's take on it. Uh, you guys know if you have any questions, put them in the chat, raise your hand, um, but I'll let Alex take it away. Awesome. Thank you. And license since 2016, by the way. Oh, sorry. It says 2016 on what you texted me this morning. You said 2018. Oh, no, but it's all good. Did uh, I say 2018? Yeah. yeah. It's oh. all good. Um, I, yes. Uh, uh, well, thank you, Lene. I appreciate the introduction. I appreciate being here. Um, I decided on this topic because, you know, I see, you know, a lot of times we're talking about lead generation, you know, about all the new tools and tricks and things that we're getting in real estate. And I really wanted to um, spend a little bit of time uh, talking about taking care of our our clients who are really the the real heroes in this whole um, story, and you know there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of great great tools, a lot of great systems out there, a lot of great strategies. I'm going to teach you my strategy, and it doesn't require that you have a budget. All I'm really talking about is just being present for your clients, right? So um, I do ask people, you know, please engage if you can. I know that a lot of you guys are zoomed out, especially being part of this organization. We have five to six different Zoom calls we can be on at any given time. But um, I do appreciate anyone who can turn their camera on. Um, I really enjoy seeing like the click in people's eyes as they come to some new realization. I know that's not always possible if you're driving or you're out walking, but it would be helpful if you can turn your camera on just so I can see that you guys are picking up what I'm putting down here. So um, a little bit extra about me. I, I run my business in a very intentional way. Um, I do not like to work a lot. I like to work less than 20 hours a week. Um, if you have been following me for a while, you probably know that I like to travel a lot. I actually made it a uh, policy this year that I was going to take one week off every single month. Um, I have done that. Uh, I've done it a few times. The last trip that I went on was actually three and a half weeks. That was in July. Um, and I'm also, like uh, Lene said, I'm going to be starting um, kind of fresh in a market where I know nobody in uh, November, middle November. So I'm really excited about that as well. Um, but I'm very intentional about my business. I, I, I follow a very structured routine where I get most of my work done in the morning before 11 o'clock so that the rest of the day I can be available for my clients. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about that here today as well. Um, I do love teaching. This is one of my favorite things to do, not just, you know, um, my clients, but also other real estate agents. My whole business is designed around making sure that I have freedom. Um, and I really love real estate. I, it's like a puzzle, right? Like every single time like we understand how the pieces fit together. And our clients, oftentimes, they're either they have a lot of misassumptions about real estate. Maybe they've done real estate before. They had a bad experience. My overall goal with clients is to make sure that they understand everything that goes into this process so that we're not running into any hurdles or pitfalls down the road where they're feeling like they're not in control of the situation. Okay. Um, so yeah, I love to do good work. It gives me, it gives me fulfillment. Uh, it gives me a sense of purpose. And, you know, I, I love winning, you know, in real estate, I love going out there and having a seller get above uh, offer asking or negotiating some great term or helping a buyer get uh, new keys and overall just um, seeing them kind of have success in the transaction. Right. I think that's, one of the things that gives a lot of us the greatest joy, even more than the commission, a lot of times, is that sense of fulfillment, right? Um, 
So um, service uh, and client experience, those are those are words that, that get thrown around a lot, right? A lot of real estate agents go out there and they say they give excellent you know, client service and experience. But the reality is 87% of real estate agents fail, right? I remember when uh, I first got in the business. So this was like March of 2017. I went to a, a realtor rally in my local area. And you know, I was on a great team before and they had taught us a lot of things. So really, my broker encouraged me to go to this mostly so that I could see what my competition looks like, right? And if you ever go to these things, you'll realize that you are probably head and shoulders above the competition just because you're showing up to calls like this, right? You are actually purposefully educating yourself every single day so you can do better for your clients. And what he said, and it really stuck with me and always has, he says, it's not so much that I'm a great real estate agent as it is the rest of you all just suck. I heard Joe, uh, Joe Seaman said something really great on a call earlier this week. He said, real estate agents are of the laziest creatures on the planet Earth. <laughs> I wrote that down and I, I think I'm going to keep that one in my, in my repertoire forever now, too. But it's true. Um, you know, I've, I've trained in rate agents. I've worked with other agents. And I feel like the values that I'm going to talk about and the things that I use when I'm talking to clients are really just lacking in a lot of in a lot of real estate agents out there. And this is not hard stuff. It is not that difficult to make sure that your clients are are well taken care of. So what I want you guys to, to, to kind of start with, and if you can put this in the chat too, if you can help me out with this, is tell me, you know, some situations in your past where you've had what you thought was just a wow experience with a business. You know, what was it that really stuck out to you about that business that made you feel like you were you were properly taken care of, that you understood everything that was going on. If you can share some of those things, I think that will help with the overall um, process of, uh, of breaking this all down. And then while you're writing those things out, try to think of different ways that you know you could replicate that in your business. You know, I, I think about I used to bartend and serve years ago, over ten years ago now, right? And it's not so much that I need a bartender or a server to make sure that I'm getting what it is I want right away. I just need to know that they are taking care of me, that they know that I'm I'm present and that they're going to make sure that they're giving me the attention that I need. Right. If you think about when I was bartending, I would have a situation where I'd have a full bar. I'd be like, OK, you're up next. You're runner up. You're on deck. I promise I'm going to get to you. You don't need to respond to people and get them everything immediately. I uh, um, but you do need to make sure that they know that they are being taken care of and you are getting to them, right? So my, um, I also had an experience, you know, with, with a vet recently, you know, where, you know, we had a situation with uh, one of my previous dogs who had passed away. Uh, but even just knowing kind of the process and the experience and everything that I should be prepared for as I was going throughout it gave me a sense of control in a situation where there's really no control, Right. You, you are, you know, we're dealing in a situation that's difficult. Real estate is difficult. For a lot of people, this is one of the most stressful things that they will do. And if we can just give them an idea of what to expect as they go throughout this process, that's just going to make all the difference to them. They're going to feel like they're much more in control of the situation. And to me, that is what this is all about. Um, also, if you can put in there, why do you think, uh, you know, taking making sure that your clients have a good experience is so important? Referrals. Repeats and referrals. I see that. Reviews. Um, also, at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the client also feels like they're taken care of. That leads to longevity um, over time. Right. And if you're consistently taking care of people and people are seeing that you're doing business and that your clients are happy with working with you, that gets around. You know, there's a lot of real estate agents out there. There's actually a running joke. And how many real estate agents does it take to screw in a light bulb? The answer is one, but there'll be seven others to tell you they could have done a better job, right? What I want to do is I want to set the expectations and lay out the game that I want to play with my clients up front when I first meet with them so that when they have that other agent down the road that's chirping in their ears about what it is that they would have done differently, I don't have to worry about it because they know that I know what I'm talking about and I set the table and I set the expectations overall, right? Uh Really great quote by Jim Rohn is a customer well taken care of is worth more than $10,000 in marketing. In real estate, I would say it could be $100,000. You take really good care of that client and they're going to rave about you to everyone that they know. 
you will get referrals from most people. You will get repeat clients, right? Even just this morning, I got a repeat client reached out to me. Yesterday, I had a referral. All just because I'm making sure I'm taking care of my clients, right? Uh, I also tell people I don't sell houses. I represent clients. They're the ones who are in, in control of the decision. They're the ones who are going to be out there telling me what it is they want to offer. I'll be offering guidance. I'll be taking care of those things. But I don't sell houses. I take care of clients. I represent clients, right? That's what we're doing. We are representing clients, whether they're buying or they are selling. Um, I do also tell people, you know, pick and choose, you know, out of my philosophy. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that like to, to spend a lot of money on, on, on different things. I don't really spend money on, you know, other than like small little trinket gifts and things that I send after closing, just make sure that I'm front of mind. Um, but my overall process is really um, developed around my core values. Uh, my whole life is actually developed around my core values. My core values are education, communication, and responsiveness. And when I talk about education, I, I mean, also personally, I, I do spend probably a liberal arts tuition on my personal education, like every single year <laughs> through various different coaching programs. Um, I, I feel like that's one of the things that's really spring bounded me to having one best real estate in two years in a row here is I'm always constantly trying to figure out how it is that I can do better, not just for my clients, but I can also improve my life as well. Um but I also like to make sure that I have a process and plan in place with my clients, whether they are buying or selling. I have a 90 minute overview that I go over with a buyer and a seller on what to expect, how to operate, and then what uh, they need to understand. And it's all explained in an easy to understand way. I don't talk about a lot of real estate lingo. This is a lot of the times over the head of a lot of the consumers. Most of them are on Google, on Zillow. They're they're on YouTube. They're trying to figure out how this whole thing works. And they don't teach you how to buy or sell real estate in school. right? A lot of that information is specific to your local market. And it's just not going to give them what they need to actually make good decisions. Our job is to break it all down in an easy to understand way. So that we don't have to worry about those things so much down the road, right? Uh, but I want to make sure that they understand the market, different hurdles that we could go in throughout that. And then some of the common experiences that I'm seeing in my local market. So you got to kind of make and choose what it is in your area you talk about. I always, in those initial meetings, I also have a conversation about boundaries. And I think that's an important part of establishing a really good um, experience for your clients. Because if they understand that you're going to respond in a timely manner, but you're not going to respond immediately all the time, right? Like a lot of us, if I'm on a Zoom call with you guys, I'm not on my phone texting clients or following up with people who are reaching out to me, right? Same thing if I'm you know, out showing house or I'm appointing with a client. Immediate I, responsiveness is one of my core values, but it, it does not mean immediate, right? Sometimes I'm just out walking the dog. Sometimes I'm in yoga. Sometimes I'm in the pool, right? Whatever, right? I like to travel too, right? So I want to make sure that people understand those things. But I want people to understand that, you know, when it comes to, you know, shopping as well, I'm going to be watching the MLS and looking for things. But really, I'm going to be putting a lot of the control on the houses that they choose to see in their hands. They have access to the same tools and services that we do. A lot of the times, what I'm going to do when they find something they like is I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to do some of the basic research, look at property taxes, disclosures, making sure everything goes that way. But I'm going to put a lot of the control and the shopping into them right? And let them take care of those things. They can also expect good, clear communication from me as well, right? I, when I send out text messages, they can be, you know, 10 to, to 12 lines, but I want to make sure I'm kicking over dominoes so that I'm laying out everything in an easy to understand way to them. Um, I don't really just do two, three line things. I do use emojis quite a bit because I feel like, um, you know, with, with communication being a lot of body language, when we're just sending a text message out, I want to make sure, you know, thumbs up emojis, smiley faces, prayer hands, whatever it is you can put in there to make them feel like you're not just like blanket, just throwing information out at them, right? I like, I like to put my little, my personality into it a little bit, but I also tell them what I expect out of them, all right? I expect loyalty. You're not going to cheat on me. You're not going to go out there and you're not going to have uh, another real estate agent just got their license or another agent that you knew or someone at work who is going to tell you how things work. And um, we've all been in situations, I'm sure, where you've had another agent start telling their clients what they would have done differently, right? It's a really, um, it, it's an uncomfortable experience because they weren't in the room where it happens, right? We're actually experiencing it as they're going through it in real time, right? I also expect communication from them that goes both ways. I'm also not a mind reader. So if they are changing their plans or they have different thoughts about things, they have to communicate that to me, right? I expect that. And then also, um, I have a no a-hole policy. Right. 
If you are going to disrespect me or if you are going to be rude or you are not going to be appreciative of what I'm putting forward, I will turn you over to another agent. And I do not care what the commission size is. I'll get a referral fee out of it. I, I, I am not going to put that stress into my life. I understand for many that are in kind of those early years, that's a tough thing to really you know, accept. But you know, you have value and you need to make sure you're protecting your, your mind space as well. Those ones that are going to you know, disrespect you, they're going to take up 80% of your time. Right? You, know, you need to go out there and find someone who's going to actually appreciate what it is that you're doing. Right? Um, but when it comes to it, I want to make sure that all my clients understand how to operate. So in that initial meeting, um, if it were a buyer, I want to explain to them how it is I want them to shop. I'm going to explain to them what to expect out of showings. I don't want someone to show up early to a showing because they might run into the seller or another agent. I want them to show up on time or late. I'd rather you show up late than early is what I tell my clients. Right. I explain to them what I expect for how we're going to view that property, walking around, going inside, how it is that we're kind of selecting what we're looking at. And then how do we make an offer? And I want to have that conversation with them up front so that they know kind of the key elements that goes into making an offer so that when we get to that situation where they're ready to offer, they know all the basics. It's just a five minute conversation. Right. I know there are some agents that they'll just go show the house to a. <clears throat> Uh, random uh, buyer. I don't do that. I, I have buyer representation agreements with every single one of the clients that I bring in. I won't. I won't get it in, in my car to show a house without a buyer rep and a pre approval or a proof of funds. Um, I, I take care of my clients and I expect them to make sure that they are able to perform on what it is they're doing. Right. Um, and then I want to explain transaction milestones. Now, of course, as we go throughout the whole process, I'm not going to just be like, oh, I already explained this to you. I'm not going to tell you that again. I'm going to reiterate it, right? I'm going to be like, okay, remember we had this conversation before. This is what we talked about. Here are some different things that we can do. Um, the short answer to almost everything in real estate is it depends. And I lay that out with my clients too, right? There is not um, a blanket situation, uh, answer to every situation. Sometimes we have to kind of figure out what's kind of going on. How many days are on the market, you know, going from there. And then from sellers, what to expect for getting ready. Um, asking price is a marketing tool. Right? It's not what your house is going to sell for. It's a marketing tool. Um, how do we negotiate offers? And then what to expect for transaction milestones as a seller. And then a lot of the hurdles that I'm experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. When I'm in those initial meetings as well, I'm, I'm planting little seeds of things that I'm actively doing in the market on a week-to-week -week basis. I want them to know that I have a feet in the street experience that this is what I saw last week. This is what I've recently seen. I saw this happen in the past. One of the agents at my brokerage went through this recently. I want them to know that I am actively doing real estate every day. Right. And I am. Even when I'm on vacation, I'm still doing real estate, just not all the time. Right. Because there's, you know, a lot of people talk about like work life balance. I am just trying to live a life and I happen to enjoy real estate. I'm addicted to this stuff, this stuff, honestly. This is it's so it's so fun to me. Like I I, I probably will never retire, right? Just because I'm I enjoy it so much. But I also like to have my free time. Um, so then I mean, you know, why again the reason why I feel these things are important is there's a lot of agents out there like that will try to tell clients how things work. Um, I like to lay out my own rules. I like to explain the boundaries, how to actually go out there shopping, how to actually list your property for sale, because I don't want another agent out there telling them how they would have done it differently. I want them to see the game that I'm playing and show them that I'm the master of this game. Right? It's a blue ocean strategy. Right? Big book. Um, number two is communication. 85% of the problems in the world are due to some sort of miscommunication, in my opinion. Right? If someone isn't articulating a problem to me, I'm not going to be able to solve that problem because I'm not a mind reader. Right. I want to, I also want to explain everything that's going on in an easy to understand way. I want them to feel like I'm not just kind of regurgitating a lot of information at them. I want them to feel like this is something that's actually simple enough for them to um, take care of. Um, I also like to cover a lot of ground really fast. Um, like I mentioned earlier with those text messages, a lot of the times I will, you know, just have a very thorough breakdown. Hey, if you just got an accepted offer on your house, the first thing I want you to do, the number one thing I want you to do is celebrate. Right? You just got an accepted offer. Take time to accept, celebrate that. That's a milestone, right? Number two is tomorrow I will reach out to you about getting earnest money, getting inspections lined up, and then I will break down how to expect from financing and everything from there. Right? They should have a semblance of what to expect from there from the initial agreement, initial consultation. But I also am going to make sure that as we go throughout the transaction, that they also understand that I'm not just kind of dropping the ball at that point. I want to make sure they understand everything that's going in. 
Um, I do, I do do check-ins, but I am not one of those agents that's going to be hounding my clients all the time. Like I said, I let them choose the houses that they want to see. If I see something out there that I like and I think might be of interest to them, I'm obviously going to set them up on that. And I have different systems that set it up so that they can see those houses. But this isn't the 90s anymore. We're not using an MLS book where we know the houses, right? They have access to a lot of the same information we do. I'm not them. I want them to have the opportunity to find those things themselves, other than properties that are off the market, which I am paying attention to pretty regularly, right? My favorite uh, phrases in, uh, in text messages um, is that you need to take no action at this time. So if you're getting a situation where you just got their earnest money set up or you got the inspection set up and now you're in that kind of limbo phase after getting an, an offer accepted to when the appraisal is happening and you're just getting inspections and everything set up. One of my favorite things to tell my clients is I got all these things set up. This is happening this time. This is happening this time. This time, this happening this time. You need to take no action at this time. People feel they're like they're taken care of when they're like, oh, I, I don't need to do anything. He just took that all off my plate, right? To me, that is making sure that you are giving a good client experience, right? I am on top of it. This is what you hired me to do. I'm working. I'm making sure that all of the dominoes are set up for you, right? I also believe that no update is an update. When problems happen in a transaction and something's going wrong, I want to let them know I don't have an update yet, right? If it's been two hours since we've reached out to try to resolve something, no updates yet, still no updates. If I have gone you know 12 hours without an agent responding i'm going to let them know i'm going to poke that agent just poke that agent i'm letting them know that i'm reaching out to the agent i'm on top of those things right i want them to know that i am focusing on what's going on. i just spoke to the loan officer i just did this right everything's kind of happening at the same time letting them know that you are taking action behind the scenes right and then i also will commonly follow up throughout the transaction um you know do you have any questions at this time is there anything that i can answer for you uh, congratulations your appraisal just came back here's the next step with the title work you know congratulations the buyer just made this offer you know i have we have three offers right now here's offer a here's the basics breakdown in the text message here's offer b here's a basic text message breakdown when we have the opportunity to talk about this i go over this with you in person i will certainly do that you have any questions they answer anything for you right just making sure that you're they feel like you are taking care of them and you're kind of helping them throughout the process and understanding what's happening next right and as you're explaining it while you're going throughout the transaction you've already laid the groundwork initially and in making sure that they understand how the process works and everything is happening along the lines of what you discussed with them initially you told them what to expect and those things are happening Right. And again, short answer to everything is it depends. Right. So there are variations within real estate, but we're also preparing them for that um, experience as well. Um, uh, again, uh, with my third core value, which is response, but this does not mean immediate. <laughs> um, I do have other clients. Uh, I, I do. I do do yoga. I go to the gym. You know, I walk around with the dog. Sometimes it's raining. I also will uh, prep my clients for the fact that there's a good chance that if I'm talking to you, I might be driving. I'm sorry, but I'm usually out there working and you might hear a little car noise. Um, I do like to travel quite a bit. So I might not actually physically be in the area. I will be showing probably 75% of the houses to you. But when I'm gone, I have agents around that are going to be showing those houses for you. I will be handling the negotiations unless I'm in the mountains and I can't, I don't have service, right? I want to make sure that you have responsiveness from me, but there are, there will be some situations. Most clients will understand that, especially when you build a business around a client avatar who's much more understanding that you need to also be able to you know enjoy life and recharge and go through those things as well um i'm very clear with people that that i do like to travel quite a bit um and i have agents who are available to do those things as well but one of the biggest complaints from consumers is how their um agent is just not responsive to them i can't tell you how many times in my career someone would be like i reached out to my agent yesterday and they're not getting me anything they're I don't know why agents are just so terrible at this a lot. <laughs> it's really pathetic sometimes. It makes you feel bad. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, when you think about it too, you know, think about a restaurant you went to and you had a bad experience. They just wouldn't look you in the eyes. They wouldn't, you know, really take care of anything. Things were slow. They weren't responsive. It's the exact same thing in real estate. If they feel like you're getting them the information, you don't even have to get them what they want right away. You just got to let them know that you are working on it. Right. Responsiveness is all about just making sure that they are taken care of and they feel like they're um, being responded to in a quick time. Um, in my market, if you want to see a house for sale, you got to get in there that day. 
Right? It's not as bad as what it was in 2020, right? <laughs> but you need to get in fast, right? And you need to explain that to them. I also um, throw into that response on the side is me understanding what's going on in the market, the online data, the 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 MLS, the RPR, um, InfoSparks, whatever you use in your market for what is happening in the market. That information is six to eight weeks behind what the market is currently doing. Because those houses went under a contract 30 to 60 days ago, right? I'm doing real estate today. I see. I saw what happened yesterday. I saw what happened last week. I saw what happened two weeks. I see what's going on in the market trends. I'm responding to the market as it's going so that you're not going to make a mistake, right? If the average real estate agent does 3.92 transactions a year, are they, are they, do they have enough experience in the market to really advise you as to what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis? Probably it's not. only 3.92 transactions a year now? Yeah. It went down because it used to be like with six transactions a year. Yeah, it was eight when you got in. Wow, I didn't realize that. Wow. Okay, that was you've got, you got some good uh, some good stats in here, Alex. Like you said, you had a couple of mic drops. They're asking prices a marketing tool. I love that phrase. Uh, no update is an update. Love that as well. And then three point nine two transactions a year. Damn. Yeah, it, that's sad. Okay, I need to change my my uh, my buyer and seller systems now because I have in there that we do significantly more, but I think my number is too small. I think I need to up that now in my tools. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll, I will wrap up with a few more things. I know we're, we're running short on time here. Yeah, um, yeah. A lot of this comes down to anticipating the needs of your client. If you do this enough times, you know what their next thought process, their next steps are going to be. Um, when I'm representing sellers, I explain to them in the initial call, which is almost always, you know, what's my home worth? Selling is a series of questions. Number one is going to be, what's my home worth? Number two is, what do I got to do to get my house ready to sell? What repairs? What updates are worth doing? Um, number two is, how quickly can we get it up on the market? Uh, and number four is going to be, what happens when showings happen? You know, how do I, how do I, a lot of sellers don't focus on the showing aspect of it. What are you do with your pets? Where are your kids going to go? Where are you going to go? You know, are you going to take a weekend off? What, what happens if your house doesn't sell in four days? Now you got to come back and you gotta live there and you got showings happening while you're living there, right? A lot of different things. Selling is a series of questions. Uh, buyers, if someone's a first time home buyer, I can almost always win that client because I'm going to explain to them everything they need to know. And they're, I had an agent at another brokerage recently tell me that, you know, buyers can get information and educated online all the time. I don't even go over that process. And I was like, well, that is wrong. <laughs> uh, I feel like my clients win a lot more because they uh, they understand what's going on, right? It's not an initial conversation as soon as they find something that they like. But yeah, a lot of it's you know, anticipating needs. Um, leverage is a big part, part of this too. I do a lot with digital marketing. One of the reasons why I'm able to work less than 20 hours a week is I'm not always on the phone making phone calls like I did early in the business because my my Facebook videos, Instagram, YouTube, everything's out there. Um, reviews, uh, referrals, Google My Business. Because of that, I'm leveraged in my time. I can be more available to my clients. Um, if you do set the table, initially, and you explain everything to them up front, your clients will give you a lot more grace as you go throughout the transaction too, because you you overwhelmingly tried to show them that you tried to give them as much information as you could. Um, great book for taking care of your clients while you're going throughout the transaction is the uh, five love languages, you know, um, words of affirmation, acts of service, gifts, quality time. I probably would stay away from the physical touch most of the time. But at the end of the day, you know, you want to you want to make sure that they feel like they are taken care of. I do do a lot after the fact, too. You know, I always ask for reviews. I show them I'm getting reviews. A lot of my clients are Facebook friends with me. It makes it easier to to, to even get more clients from that way. But. All right. That's my last little bit. So. <laughs> Um, okay, Alex, there were a couple of questions that came through the chat a minute ago. It was um, Steve asked, hold on, where'd it go? 90 minutes, evergreen video or sit down Zoom with each client for 90 minutes? Hmm. Um, I prefer um, a sit down. I like meeting at like there's a, there's a few uh, restaurants here in town. Um, and I, I prefer late lunches. So I like to be out there at like two or three. <laughs> um, and um, there's a few restaurants here in town where the manager actually bought or sold or multiple times with me. So when I go there, a lot of the staff, like they know me. So my clients feel like they're uh, much more comfortable that way. But I'm more than comfortable to do it via Zoom too. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I let the client choose in person or over Zoom, whichever is, whichever is easier for them. Yeah. I prefer in person just because um, there's kind of that physical aspect and they get to see that other people know that I'm doing real estate regularly because it's not my first time sitting at that table, you right. know, with a client. 
Right. Hmm, that's smart. I just gave a $20 tip to whoever my server is. So yeah. Thanks for the table. Uh, Julie. Um, you are going, say, one month trip or three months, three weeks trip, everything like that. How can you make sure that your team is also have the same values and same thing that what you are really trying to deliver? Yeah. Yeah. Goes, and then you hand over your really best client and, and that always happens. That's the day that they make yeah. offer when you are actually in the mountain. Yeah, that's why I take so many vacations is because I know that's when I'm going to get the most business. That's actually one of my lead generation strategies is uh, plan a vacation and and I'll I'll get at least three three four sales out of it. So I'm excited to go to EXPCon next week and watch my business blow up. Uh, but um, yep. To answer your question, uh, I, you know I don't um, run a, a team anymore. I, I did that for a while. It was a lot of headache. Um, it's a lot of you know chasing agents around, and it wasn't something I liked. I hired and I fired two of my core values as soon as they um, stopped adhering to my core values. I let them go. You know, we're not we're not we're not playing in the same idea anymore. Um, but if I'm gone. It's just showings. Uh, I'm just asking them to go do a showing for me. Um, there's you know, a handful of agents that I trust to go do a good showing for my client that I know that they're going to go over everything. The agents who are going to call me afterwards and let me know what's going on. Yeah, I feel comfortable with that. Um, other than that, like for listings and things like that, all I got to do is get a sign in the yard, lock box up, and then go from there. I don't do open houses either. I know a lot of you are big on open house. Not so it's main, mainly trust like partnerships with other age and not the team. That's what my whole part, like, because I know you yep. used to have a team before, but then now, okay. Yeah, yep. a, lot of, a lot of other agents that I know and trust, um, even not, but not always even at my brokerage. Yeah. I mean, Julie, I can I can tell you a little bit. Like, just as a team leader, I think uh, you know if you if you're putting bringing people on your team, a you need to interview to your core values. You need to hire to your core values. You need to coach to your core values. Anytime we have an issue on my team, I we bring it right back to the core values. Hey, do you think this is? Do you think that this right this behavior is an example of being determined? Is this behavior right here an example of being enthusiastic? Is this behavior right here an example of being respectful? Right. So we we have five core values on my team, and I hire, train, and coach to them all the time. Okay. So yeah, if gonna... anyone doesn't meet those core values. There's like a zero tolerance, zero tolerance policy. So like, <laughs> but we coach to them all the time. And my team and my, my team coaches each other to the core values as well. So okay. yeah, that helps because I'm right now in the expanding phase and then getting there. So, you know, how it takes time in that hiring process. I mean, right now I'm just about to post a job for an executive assistant and I don't anticipate on filling that job until maybe the end of November. Like I'm not in a hurry. So you just got to, you got to take time on hiring the right people. Uh, when it comes to hiring agents, I, um, I haven't really made ads for agents yet. I people come to me naturally. And, uh, you know, I have, I'm just about to bring another agent on my team who has been following me on social media. So I think like, it just kind of goes into, you got to think about when you're trying to grow a team, you got to think about, your your presence on social, you know, it's just like you're attracting clients, you got to attract the right agents, right? So my my recruiting method is very, very, um, I call it reactive recruiting. I don't do a lot of proactive recruiting. I'm not out there making a bunch of calls and trying to come to my team, come to my team, come to my team. That's not what I'm doing. I'm like, look, here's who I am. Here's what we're doing. You can join me or not. Like it's no skin off my back. If you do join me, we're going to have a great time. All of you who are here on my team, I know you are. And if you're here in my EXP organization, you know, we're going to have a great time in my EXP organization as well. So like, you know, we're going to have a really good experience because people know who I am. So I think that that's kind of going to eliminate that whole, like, how do you make sure they're, they're, they're meeting your expectations. You have to make sure that you are actually putting out your expectations. All right. Isabel. Yes. I have a question for Alex. Um, did you say that when you have, like, um, when you're working with buyer referrals, do you refer those out to other agents or how do you do that? Uh, so, so if, if I, if, if I have someone who needs to be referred out, I'll refer it out to somebody, but if they're in my market, I'm not going to, if I, if, if they're an active client of mine, I'm going to hire someone to do a showing for me, right? I'm not going to give them 50% to go show a house, right? I can, I can, I can write an offer. My TC can write an offer for me. I'm like that. That's not something I'm going to do. Uh, are you talking, is that what you're talking about? Said, um, Right now, you know, my sister wants to focus more on listings. And so um, for her buyers that she has in her database, they're like some of these people raise their hands um, slowly. But I think she wants to like um, 
give out those leads to another agent out, um, outside her uh, outside of her team um, so they can work on that way. She can have more time to focus on the listings. And I'm just wondering if that's a, a good strategy or not. I guess, I guess I've been really blessed. Um, I think by explaining everything up front to my buyers, I mean, my buyers might look at an average of six houses before they get one under contract. We don't win every offer, of course. I'm not one of those agents going to say that's what happens, right? We, we lose sometimes, but because they know what to expect and how to operate and kind of the pitfalls, I feel like they're much more educated and therefore better to... Um, you know, get accepted offers. So I don't, I don't personally, I, I will refer out if they're more than 40 minutes away, but in general, I think I can handle a client so long as they're not, you know, so long as I think they're a good fit, right. And they're listening to me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Alex has told me many times, and I talk about this a lot. Alex loves buyers. He loves them. I love listings. So for me, in order for me to do more listings, I have to bring on more buyers agents, right? Alex loves buyers. I do. So Isabel, I would say if your sister's in the point where she wants to like really focus on listings, she's not going to financially and fiscally, it's going to make more sense to actually bring on an agent, train them on her systems and her processes. It's going to make more fiscal sense. But you know, then it's going to take a little bit of like, you have to manage people, you have to train people, you have to delegate, right? There's a lot of a lot, a lot that comes with that. So I think you just kind of have to let her figure out what's going to be the best best solution for her. But if you do have referral, if she does want to refer that out, I would strongly, strongly recommend, just like Alex said, he has agents in his market that he already trusts because they worked with him on many, several occasions or whatnot. I would strongly recommend you don't just find any agent and refer them to any agent that is going to ruin your reputation. So you want to make sure that you interview your referral agents as well. So think of them as like bringing on a team member, right? Here's my my dedicated list of referral agents. Uh, so I would strongly recommend if that's the route she wants to go to take some time in that as well. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing that. Having, having good relationships with other agents is so important for your clients as well. Um, I, there was a college professor I had years and years ago who was like, you know, if I know a student needs an A on a, on a paper and they're right on the precipice between a B plus and a, a minus, if that agent or if that student is showing up regularly and is is respectful i'm more likely to bump that grade up a letter grade and i kind of i feel like that sticks the same way in multiple offer situations and working with with uh with uh, other agents you know they're not going to sway the client to work with your buyer per se but they might be like i worked with this agent before um they're dialed in they communicated with me they followed up with me they sent me an email it was easy to download everything he explained everything to me i know that he knows what he's doing it's much easier to to get them to accept your offer or to want to work with with your seller on the sale. Thank you for sharing that. Really appreciate those tips from Linnea and Alex. Julie, do you have a question? Another question? Yeah, good question. Um, do you guys do you really follow a like a buyer questionnaire or listing questionnaire? Like when you're doing your first interview, you like, a, like, a, like, a, my heart. like a sheet or or something like that. Like, like something like a series of questions that you don't want to miss. Yes. Um, every at, at the initial console, I go through the basic forwards. I also ask them basic questions about where they're looking, what what right. what they are looking for. I might ask them some things that maybe they they hadn't considered. You're like, does it matter if it's a fenced in yard? Um, how many garage stalls do you want? You know, does it matter if it's attached or detached? Um, you know, um, if we find a house that has only got one bathroom, but you can put another bathroom in, is that going to be acceptable? Well, I, I want to know that because if I'm setting you up on different tools, I don't want to eliminate something just because it's not showing up on the MLS. And I, I always tell my clients too, like most agents un, honestly are not good at this. So they might put some information in online incorrectly. And I don't want you to miss something just because there's one box that didn't get checked. Right. So uh, I try to do that. But um, my buyer presentations, I, I, I just like to show them that I'm very knowledgeable in real estate. So really, my buyer presentations are blank sheet of paper. Agency disclosure, buyer representation agreement. Same with the sellers, just a listing agreement coming soon with whole forms, agency docs, right? Um, I just have blank sheet of paper and I just have a whole process on what I'm breaking down on there. My The blank sheet of paper is really messy at the end. I, my handwriting is terrible too, but I just, I'm showing them that I've, I've done this so many times. I don't need to have a piece of paper in front of me um, to show that I know what I'm doing. I can just do it on a blank sheet of paper. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. Alex, thank you so much. That was so helpful. I learned I learned quite a few things. I got, I got a whole page of notes here. So I love that. Um, 
So I just wanted to put one more plug in actually, because next week uh, I'm at EXPCon, uh, but one more plug for my uh, Fix My Systems course. I have two spots left, you guys, two spots. So it's about to sell out. Uh, Milu just put the link in the chat. If you want to know, you've ha- if you've asked me for ex- access to my systems over the years, I am starting to roll them out to people. I'm starting to teach them. This first course is a four-week course. It's a four-week workshop, uh, four hours of group coaching. You're going to get my social media system strategy content plan. Uh, you're going to get my entire content warehouse. You're going to get my exact systems and tools to be able to leverage and automate your social media to make sure that you're staying consistent in front of people and attracting business to you on a regular basis. So uh, the registration link is right there. But like I said, there's only two spots left. So you might want to hurry on it because I had a few people reach out to me and ask me if I'm going to extend it. And the answer is no, it is full when it's full. So um, if you have any questions about that, you know where to find me. Other than that, we will see you next week. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.